Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for how to make another project from my newest crochet book, Layers. This tutorial is for the Chandra Bolero cardigan. This very simple project uses a clever construction of motifs crocheted into squares and triangles. Sizing determines the number of motifs you make pattern is available as an instant download or it's also featured in my newest crochet book layers 18 projects to fit flatter and drape this is a very interesting uh, construction technique because what we're doing is taking square motifs and turning them on the diagonal to create a different look in motifs this is the schematic for the sweater and in order to do that and have smooth lines along the bottom of the project you have to make triangles to complement the square motifs to have those straight edges. The pattern includes written instructions as well as charts and we're going to go over how to make both of the motifs today. But what I wanted to show you over here is that in the beginning of the pattern it tells you how much yarn you'll need for each color if you're going to do this in two colors. You could do this in one color, two colors, multiple colors. There's no wrong way to add color work to a project like this and it would be equally as beautiful in one color as it is in two. You're going to need a size J or six millimeter crochet hook, yarn needle and scissors and we'll be using Biso Tender Yarn. It's featured here in colors Seafoam and Lagoon. We'll be using a slip stitch, single crochet, chain, double crochet, and double crochet two together, as well as a chain three join. And if you're unfamiliar with how to do any of those stitches, I highly recommend watching my playlist here on YouTube with all of the crochet stitches in a library where each stitch has its own video. I'll post a link to that in the video description. Follow the links in the video description to download the pattern or order an autographed copy of my newest crochet book layers and get information on ordering the yarn and other materials we use in this project. Let's get started. The Chandra Bolero cardigan is available in multiple sizes from 36 inches to 48 inches bust and the way that we're sizing this project is by changing the size of the motif. So when the square motif is six inches, you're creating a 36 inch bust sweater. When the motif is six and a half inches, it creates a 39, seven creates 42, and so on and so forth. So you're go going to really want to adjust your gauge in order to make the sweater the size that you need. And you can do that by changing your crochet hook. Let's get started on the chart and I'm going to show you how to do the square motif. What's really interesting about this motif, two things. First of all, the interior of the motif is done in rows, not rounds. Traditionally, most motifs are done in rounds. So we're doing the interior in rows, and then with the second color, or if you're doing this all in one color, it'd be the same, you're going to work in the round. So that's one component that's different than traditional motifs. The other component that's different about this is that we have no corners. Um, I designed this so that there are no corners that we're joining along the sides and then joining along the other sides. We aren't joining in any corners, which just gives another different type of textured look and just makes it a little unusual. So if you are following along with the charts, you wanna take a look at the keys to make sure that you understand all the stitches that will be, will be used in the square motif we're using slip stitch chain and double crochet and in the triangle motif we'll be using slip stitch chain double crochet and double crochet two together okay to begin the square motif we're going to chain 14 and then double crochet into the eighth chain from hook chain two skip two chains double chain two, skip two chains, and double, and that will be the first row. The second row is chain five, which counts as a double crochet, chain two, then double crochet in the double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the double crochet, and row three is a repeat of row two. We will fasten off because we're doing two colors, and then to join the second color to do the round, we're going to slip stitch to join in the center chain two space of row three, chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Then in that same chain two space, work double crochet, chain three, two double crochets. Then in the double crochet on the corner here, 
we'll work two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. Then in the next chain three space over here, which was the double crochet, we'll work two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. And then in the corner down here, we'll work two doubles, chain three, two doubles, chain three, two doubles. And we'll repeat this all the way around, slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. Now I'll show you what that looks like in yarn as well. Okay, I'm gonna use two contrast colors. We're using cloud and cobalt in Be So Tender yarn. And we'll start with the chain 14. I'm gonna tie my yarn to my crochet hook and chain 14. Then we're going to double crochet in the eighth chain from our hook. We don't count the loop on our hook, so we'll count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Double crochet as yarn over your hook. Insert your hook in the specified chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. Chain two. Skip the next two chains and double crochet in the next chain. Chain two. Skip the next two chains and double crochet in the last chain. And that's what the end of row one should look like. Row two begins with a chain five, which counts as a double crochet chain two. Turn our work, double crochet in the next double crochet. chain two, skip the next two chains and double crochet in the next double crochet. Oops, I skipped one, I skipped one. Here's the next double crochet. <laughs> chain two, skip the next two chains and double crochet in the next double crochet. There, that looks better. This is what the end of row two should look like. Row three is the same as row two, chain five, turn our work, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain two, skip the, uh, skip the next cha two chains and we're going to double crochet in the next double crochet, chain two, skip two chains and double crochet in the next chain, which is the third chain or the top of the double crochet portion of that chain space. And that's what the end of row three should look like. This is the end of our interior motif. I'll show you that again on the chart. So we finished this component and we're going to fasten off. Sometimes I find it helpful to weave in my loose ends as I go just to keep them out of the way. So I just wanna show you that when you're weaving in loose ends, you wanna use at least five or six inches of yarn and you want to weave them back and forth in multiple directions. They say that you should do it in a multiple of three different directions. I think the more you do, the better. So we've gone back and forth and then we'll come back up through the center. Anything you can do to keep those ends nice and secure will allow them to stay secure as your garment is washed and worn over the years. So the more you do this, the better. Try to use up as much of the tail as possible. Woven it is, the less likely it is to come back out. And then you wanna trim it really close, right up to the work. Okay, we're gonna join our, yarn, our second color into the center chain two space at the top of row three. We'll join that with a slip stitch, then chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Double crochet in that same chain two space. chain three, and two more double crochets in that same chain two space. Then in the next, in the corner here, we're going to do two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets.
Then in the next chain two space, we'll work two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. This is what the end of your square motif should look like. Next I want to show you how we join a motif on one side only. So you know how we had two sets of chain two spaces in the corners, which means one is for joining on one side and one for joining on the other. So there is no corner to join, but there are three chain two spaces to join for each side that you would join to another motif. So I want to show you on the next motif here we're getting ready to start a corner. So when you're doing a corner, that first chain two space would be joined with this side. So we're not gonna join on that side. So we'll do two double crochets, chain three, and two double crochets. But for that second chain, chain two space now, we're going to replace it with a chain three join. And what that is, is a chain one and then slip stitch to the chain three space on the adjacent motif. You could either work right into the giant space of the chain three space or into the individual chain of the second or center chain of that chain three space. Whichever way you do it is fine, just be consistent throughout the project. And then another chain one. So it's chain one, slip stitch, chain one, that counts as our chain three space and now is our chain three join. And we'll come back to our working motif and work two more double crochets in that same space. Okay, for our next chain two space, we normally do two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. And we're, we're going to replace that with two double crochets. A chain three join, which is chain one. I'm going to set it down now so you can see where we're at. We did a chain one and we're going to slip stitch to join in the next chain three space. So you could either work in the giant space or find the center chain of that chain three space and slip stitch into there. Chain one and then we'll come back now to our working motif and finish that with a chain two or with the two double crochets in that same chain two space. And I'll set that down again so you can see what that looks like. So now we've joined in two chain three spaces. And so now on the next corner, we're going to do two doubles, chain three, two doubles, chain three, two doubles. And we're only joining on th the first side. So we'll replace that first chain three space with a chain three join. So it'll be two doubles. chain three join, which is chain one. Coming over here to the adjacent motif, we're gonna slip stitch to join in the next chain three space. And I've been choosing to work in the center chain, so I'm going to stay consistent. So chain one, slip stitch, chain one. Then we'll come back to our working motif and work two double crochets. chain three, and two more double crochets. And then we'll repeat in our established pattern for the round across. This is what the two motifs look like when they're joined. Okay, so let's refer back to the chart again to see the similarities and differences when we're making the triangle motif. We start the same way we started the square motif with a chain 14, then double crochet in the eighth chain from your hook, chain two, skip two chains, double crochet in the next chain, chain two, skip two chains, and double crochet in the next chain. Then row two begins with a chain three, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain two, then double crochet two together over the last two double crochets. Chain three is a chain three and double crochet in the last double crochet. Now let me show you what that looks like with yarn. So we're starting with our interior color again. And we're going to chain 14.
then double crochet in the eighth chain from our hook. So we don't count the working loop on our, on our hook. We're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Double crochet as yarn over your hook. Insert your hook in the specified chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Chain two. Skip the next two chains and double crochet in the next chain. Chain two. Skip the next two chains and double crochet in the next chain. And row one should look like this. Row two begins with a chain three. Turn our work and double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain two. Then we're going to double crochet two together over the next two double crochets. Now this is a chain space that counts as a double crochet in the chain two. So where we place the second leg of the double crochet two together is going to be the third chain over. And I'll show you when we get there, but I need to show you what a double crochet two together looks like as well. So you yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the next double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We now have two loops on our hook, so now we're going to skip the next two chains, which would be the chain two space, and in the next chain, yarn over, insert your hook in that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. We now have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook, and that's a double crochet two together. And this is what the end of row two should look like. Row three begins with a chain three, turn our work, and double crochet in the next double crochet. And then we'll fasten off. And this is what the end of row three, or the end of our interior, looks like for the motif. So we still have three sides for working into for our final round, the three original chain two spaces along the opposite end of row one, and then the three end of rows for rows one, two, and three, and the three end of rows for rows one, two, and three on the opposite side. And that's what's similar to the square motif is that we have the same number of sides to work into on each side. We just have three sides instead of four. So let me show you how to do that. Now I've taken one of these and woven in the ends already just so it's a little easier to see what we're actually doing. I'm going to tie your yarn to your crochet hook. You can use a slip knot, square knot, does not matter. And we'll work into one of the sides. Join with a slip stitch, chain three, and double crochet in the same space chain two, and two double crochets in the same space, that's how we do it in the side, just like we did in the square, and then the corners is going to be the same as the square as well, it's two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. And that's what the corner looks like. And you'll want to repeat this all the way around. I have a finished triangle motif to show you. This is what it will look like when you're done. And then I want to show you how that compares and contrasts with the square motifs. So obviously it's three-sided instead of four, but notice that it still has the three chain three spaces for joining to another motif. So no matter where you need to join, it always has the right number of joins to join to any side of a square motif. It's just triangle so that you get those smooth lines on the edges of the square motifs because we're joining them on the diagonal and not in square formation, we'll need those triangles to have straight edges along the bottom of the sweater. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, please leave them for me in the comments. And remember, there's links to everything about this project in the video description. Where to download the pattern, how to order an autographed copy of the book, how to get the yarn, and also entire links of playlists for all of the videos from Layers, as well as links to all of my other videos here on YouTube. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.